fans have been waiting since 2011 for this Tuesday, the release date of hip hop artist Pharaoh Munch's new album. Here's a clip from the album trailer. The new album is titled PTSD following his last album, War, and grapples with questions of gun violence, addiction, depression, and the social and cultural pressures that prevent people from seeking out help for mental health issues. Munch narrates much of the album from a first-person perspective and draws on his own experiences dealing with depression, including uh, induced by prescribed medication. The album follows a kind of dystopian theme, but firmly conveys a message of self-preservation. Joining me now is Farrah Munch. So nice to have you here. So nice to be here. Why this album now? Um, just following the war album, I, I thought it would be fitting to come behind that with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, just for the theme alone, but not just for, you know, a cool title, but to really delve into some of the issues I was going through as well and be a little bit more transparent with this record than I've been in the past. And, um, you know, instead of just having metaphors and double entendres, really, go introspective with the record and talk about, you know, some of my issues with depression. This week, um, there was the very sad um, story of, uh, of Karen Washington committing suicide. And I, I knew that we had you booked and I thought, I wanted to ask you about the so frequently unacknowledged psychic pain that so many people of color experience. Definitely. I mean, uh, you know, growing up in the, the community, you look at mental issues as you know, we're strong and my parents were hardworking and it's something that's looked at as a weakness. So you kind of push through it sometimes not even realizing what the issue might be. And uh, not until in my story with the album, I had, had a stint with the dentist and he looked at uh, the cocktails of medication I was taking and he took me in his office and he was like, do you realize that this, this specific cocktail causes depression? Hmm. And I didn't even realize what I was going to until that moment, and it dawned on me. And, uh, you know, I take from that experience, and I write about it on the album. So, yeah, in the black community, it's definitely, over the years, has been looked at as a weakness, you know. You, you, your song, Damage, is the third part of a trilogy written from the perspective um, of, a, of a bullet. Right. What does that teach us? What do we learn when we take that perspective? I mean, just from a writing perspective, you know, you don't have to be first person all the time, but, you know, this is my third time writing from that perspective. So, and this time, it's a more outrage bullet. Bullet has no caring. It doesn't care what name is written on it. It's, it's more maniacal and crazy this time, the bullet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it also uh, extends itself to mental issues with people with guns and, you know, guns getting in the wrong hands of people with issues. So. It all alludes back to the topic on the album. We have, um, we've been spending most of this hour talking about race and our, our difficulty in having this conversation about race. And I kept thinking to myself as I was listening to the new album and also going back and reviewing your body of work, how might the, the Obama years have been different if all of us were listening very carefully to and taking seriously your work and the work of other independent artists, Jean Grey and others, what would we know about race in America that is now out of the public conversation or that we're getting wrong? I think, you know, for the most part with hip hop, what's beautiful about it is for me, it has always embraced all of the races very easily since, since its inception. And I think that's what's beautiful about music in general, especially hip hop. So it, it's a foregone conclusion that, you know, hip hop embraces everything, embraces people in a very beautiful way. We had Harry Belafonte on the show earlier uh, this year, and he has been calling for artists, um, particularly hip hop artists and, and artists of a, of a new generation to be socially uh, involved. I know that you actually had a, an early release of one of your songs right after the Zimmerman verdict, in part because of your sense of, right, of wanting to, to engage. What should hip hop or, or how, what, what do you see hip hop doing that is engaged in, in social policy? 
I think, you know, you should be honest as an artist. And I mean, for me, it affected me deeply. So you want to do music and speak out and do what you can and, and even be physically there and active if you can. But for me as an artist, you know, I, I try to get these emotions out through my music to heal or somebody's feeling the same way they could connect or even, you know, spur conversation about the situation. So that's just my truth, you know. And if you're feeling it and you're honest about it, then you should write about it and do music about it. I am definitely feeling the new music. Thank you so much uh, you. for being here and for talking about the album and also for, for putting so much of yourself, the vulnerability of yourself, at the core of this. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go, a note about next week. We want to brighten up spring a little bit. So we are asking you to send us pictures of your little ones in all their best spring fashions. We are calling it Babes in Nerdland. You can tweet us pictures at MHP Show or hashtag Nerdland or send us a message via our Facebook page. And for everyone who took the Nerdland Scholar Challenge, congratulations. You are now an official Nerdland Scholar, joining more than 25,000 other scholars in countries around the world who completed the challenge on the intersection of motherhood and politics.